Hello folks, my name is Eric Wilkinson with Pro Trader Strategies. This is my market commentary for Tuesday, February the 23rd, and you very well may recognize me as the Wolfman from Mainstream Media, where I've talked about the economic data, that geopolitical environment, and how that comes in to impact the markets with some of my market and analysis. I'm going to do the same thing in these daily market commentaries, but I'll go a little bit further and talk about these option strategies I'm trading in my portfolio on any given day based on those assumptions I come up with. Also, we do some webinars where we drill down on each individual option strategy and streamline that process for you folks to find the best strategy for your given assumption. So please check those out at protraderstrategies.com. And that's about it. Let's get on with the economic data across the pond. Really not a whole lot to see uh, other than we did get some Great Britain uh, sales numbers coming in lower than expected at negative 45, expected to be negative 39. Then here in the United States, we had Powell talking this morning. Now, Powell, what did he say? Basically, the fact that there was not going to be any uh, interest rate raising in the next several years. Also, I mean, basically the entire conversation was very dovish. And uh, also... Um, they were not going to slow down on their asset purchases. That market actually started selling off quite a bit, maybe selling into their hand uh, during that testifying in front, of, um, in front of the Senate. So that being said, market started selling off. We're getting a bit of rebound now that he stopped talking. But the other thing that we did also get was the consumer confidence number leading a consumer confidence number coming in at 70 or sorry 91.3 expected to be 90.2 they did revise last month's number down albeit just slightly by about four tenths of a percent all right and that's about it um here in the united states we've got our economic data now we've got to check out the markets they're still holding on to 60 over here in crude oil although we are off the highs of the day did print 63 there the market is starting to lose a little bit of momentum as you know, we did get the, I thought we got a, oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention was the Richmond uh, Manufacturing Index. That's one of the first manufacturing numbers we've seen come in below expectations. Coming in at 14, expected to be 16. Now we are finding a bit of a bottom here in bonds. Yes, we are still pushing the envelope to the downside, making a newer low today. Now, yesterday when we talked, this candle actually looked very good, like a bottoming pattern. But late in the day, we started seeing that sell off as equity started making a bit of a charge. Uh, but today, another finding, another bottoming pattern. Now, again, if it were to look like this, I'm going to wait for confirmation. I want to add some TLT or some type of interest rate, get short interest rates, long uh, bonds because I expect interest rates to go down. I mean, Powell just said it, not next several years. So that means interest rates should remain here relatively for the foreseeable future. That means bonds have gotten ahead of themselves. And I've been talking about that for some weeks now, but I am waiting for that opportunity to get involved in this for a long in bonds or short interest rates somehow. All right, Bitcoin is off quite dramatically. 10,000 off of the highs, Elon Musk. Uh, people are talking about how much he was losing and it's in, uh, it's a lot of money that he's lost in the last couple of days off of this sell off. But at the end of the day, uh, we are used to seeing these kinds of moves in Bitcoins. It seems like it anymore. All right. Gold futures holding on to 1800, but seeing some weakness here. Is it a, 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 a normal a lower high, lower low where we have this trajectory. That's the way it's setting up right now. We are consistently seeing lower lows, lower highs. And if we top out here, it is going to look like this market is going to fall out of bed. Now, I am bullish in gold, still long my GLD. I'm still holding on to that. I'm going to leave it, especially if we start seeing some weakness in the equities. There's going to be a flight to safety here to gold. Um, and we have been seeing some weakness across the board in equities. And that's why we're seeing a spike here in the VIX. Uh, was up above the 200-day moving average here for a while there and looking like we were going to go test 30 before we started seeing this bounce in equities. And we can see the Dow Jones Industrial Average right here just the last 15 minutes or 15 minutes ago almost at this point in time. We saw that we almost got back to unchanged in the 
Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now it feels like a sector rotation because when Dow Jones was making this charge to the upside, we were seeing NASDAQ have real weakness show up. You can see NASDAQ down over 200 points again today. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on this pattern here as it will look like we are creating a bottom in equities if we start finishing at or near the highs. You can see the weakness we saw in the tech sector yesterday was just relentless throughout the day. Uh, today, they're getting a bit of support, but still weakness uh, more so than we're seeing in Dow Jones, especially. It seems like more of a sector rotation to quality right now out of tech. Uh, E-mini S&P is holding up nicely amongst this sell-off, down only 23 on the day. And here's where we're talking about after the open, just a massive sell-off. I don't necessarily think it was as much to do with uh, the economic data as the geopolitical Powell speaking and really just uh, being very dovish. But, you know, that would have made me think that the being dovish, the interest rates low, uh, could cause this market to start moving higher, especially if they're not going to slow down on asset pur purchases, things of that nature. I would expect there to be a little bit more buoyancy than what we're seeing as of right now anyway. All right, Home Depot. You guys remember I have a Home Depot on in my portfolio. Uh, with that being said, I have lowered the cost basis, rolled this uh, trade out in time over the course of me owning this. But if you guys remember back, I did the March 210 calls against the um, basically several covered call strategies as a poor man's covered call or a diagonal, however you want to think about it. But... Uh, the Home Depot trade um, is what I've been working on lowering cost basis with the synthetic type of long in this uh, trade here. And that being said, today, they came out, beat the street. I've been playing this, that people are getting these stimulus checks and that they are going to be spending these at places where they can improve their home. If this is your stay at home place, this is your happy place. This is where you're going to spend your money. So with that being said, I've lowered the overall cost basis by starting out with this trade doing the March Jan and bought the 210 calls in there, sold the 285 calls, rode loose Jan out into the February and up to the uh, 295 calls there. And then again, up and out to the, um, the March 300 calls. So I've consistently rolled those out and up in time, lowering that overall cost basis that I've... Uh, uh, started out with this trade. So I've lowered my overall cost basis on this trade by just better than $3 on it. Uh, today's move, no forward guidance whatsoever. So they beat on the street, headline numbers, all of those things, but gave absolutely zero forward guidance. And that was what was a catalyst for this massive sell-off in Home Depot. Making a bit of a rebound now, which is nice, but the big sell-off was basically from the earnings call and the market just falling out of bed there. But having said that, I am still out of, uh, or I'm still in my Home Depot. The one thing I am trying to do is cover those March 300 calls. Now I was relatively close for a while there, uh, but the market has gotten away from me. I'm, I'm working a 12 cent bid and it's now trading around 40. At one point in time, I was on the market uh, as the bid, but the, um, the market's much better than where I'm at right now. At this point, obviously, I was getting that kind of pricing when the market was really selling off in Home Depot. And Penn, I'm also trying to get out of my covered calls, and those are at the 165 call handle. Again, was looking much better. I was the bid for the better part of the day, starting out with a 15 cent bid, moved it up to 17 as this market started rallying a little bit. Now it's gotten away from me. I think it's about 40 bid at 60. I'm still working that 17 cent bid way below the market. So uh, this pull pullback, I thought I'd be able to get out of those covered calls. That would have lowered my overall cost basis on this trade down to about 40 cents in pen if I were able to pull that one off, but it didn't work out. The market's starting to make a move to the upside. So I'm going to have to hold on to those a little bit longer. And then we also got Gumble. Now I talked about Gumble with this trade. I'm long Gumble uh, and decided to do some dollar cost averaging uh, a few days ago when we started seeing the uh, have a great forward guidance. We still had high implied volatility. I wanted to take advantage of that. And I went in to sell the um, some puts in there 
Uh, I can't remember exactly. I know the strike was the seven and a half puts, but I want to make sure that I get the right month. And I did it in the March, sold the seven and a half puts in there for 30 cents, bought them back yesterday for a nickel. Um, so out of that, but lowered my overall cost basis in Gumbel a little bit by 25 cents. So staying mechanical with that trade, I would have been more than happy to buy some more at around $7.50, especially with their forward guidance that they have going on. Um, but with that being said, just trying to stay mechanical with these trades. And um, that's what I've been doing around my core portfolio of some of these long stocks that I've kind of acquired over time. Uh, I want to stay mechanical with those as well as stay, uh, you know, hyperactive in the markets as we are moving forward as well. All right. That's all I've got for you folks. Other than please take a moment to go over our disclaimer. We're an educational company. Also, go check us out over at YouTube, ProTraderStrategies.com, or follow us on Facebook at ProTraderStrategies.com. We throw all kinds of good content out there for you folks so that you can educate yourself, follow along with what we're doing here, and uh, stay on top of everything. All right, that's all I got, other than if you can't take that on a miss, take it easy.